Hello everyone, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to work on the VBC Firebolt DM2. Now, I just recently uh, picked up this uh, kit and I uh, did a little bit of research on RC Tech and there seems to be some issues with the uh, transmission and uh, especially the idle gears um, breaking down, stripping, whatever. Now, what I've done to uh, fix this problem now I'm not quite sure 100% whether or not this will sort out the issues with the stock idler gears I know there's other options you can get composite and aluminum but I'm just gonna just try with the stock idler gears the this the plastic ones I guess they're relatively soft plastic but um, if I can solve the issue with the stock gears, then ultimately, if you go to the composite or aluminum, then it should be pretty much bulletproof. Now, what have I done to improve the actual transmission? Well, upon assembly, I noticed that uh, you have uh, these inserts here. And the inserts will go into the, the casing like so. I'm really not sure exactly why VBC went ahead with these inserts. However, uh, what I decided to do is I glued those inserts in by using some uh, CA glue, quick acting CA glue, because obviously this transmission you want uh, the components to be you know secure, no slop whatsoever going on uh, in the transmission uh, area around here because you want the gears to be you know strong in you know obviously meshing uh, you know consistently throughout the motion of the transmission. So what I did is I CA glued uh, the um, inserts into um, the casing. So they're fixed in. I didn't use a lot of CA, just a, a little bit of a dab just to secure it in there. Now I also, um, you know, did the same for the other side of, for the other side of the case. Now what I also did is I took these pins here and I placed the pins, you know, in their respective holes. and I noticed that there was a bit of a uh, some slop uh, in uh, where the pins would be uh, positioned. So I thought, well, if I glued the inserts in and it's nice and secure, I might as well just go ahead and glue the actual pins in. So what I did is I, you know, cleaned it with some motor spray, and I scuffed uh, the the one side of the uh, pins that will be going into the hole locations and being CA'd. Now the thing is, I CA'd the pins in because. If there's a case where, you know, something happens and I need to remove the pins, all I need to do is just simply take a pair of pliers and gently twist on the pin and the CA uh, will, you know, crack and, you know, you can pull out the pin, do whatever you want, maintenance, etc. Anyway, so I CA'd the pins in and now I have a nice solid mounting uh, point for the idler gears and uh, when everything comes together, uh, you know, the transmission will be, you know, solid and consistent uh, throughout the rotations. Now, one thing uh, I noticed with the uh, the Firebolt uh, gear top shaft here is that there was a lot of, like, side-to-side -side, uh, slop when it was in installed. Now, uh, after, uh, you know, half an hour of, you know, placing shims in and, you know, building up the transmission uh, like so... Uh, I've noted that you only you only need a 0 0.2 millimeter uh, thickness shim in order to remove some of that slop. Now, the reason why I res removed that slop was that this top shaft, when the car is you know accelerating or deaccelerating, um, the shaft will shift back and forth depending on you know what input you put in through the motor. Okay, and so. Obviously, this top shaft is made out of metal, and this is made out of plastic. Well, if you get this sawing motion going back and forth on this gear, ultimately, it's going to start to wear away uh, the teeth. And so, by removing uh, the slop, uh, you don't have to completely eliminate all the slop. You can have a tick of play in the actual top shaft, but by removing it, you're removing that sawing action, which should ultimately... Uh, reduce the wear and improve uh, the uh, efficiency of uh, the trans transmission. And that was pretty much it. And uh, I did actually go one step 
further by adding uh, 0. Point, what is it? 0. Point 10, uh, 0. Point, uh, 10 millimeter shims in where the screw locations are. Uh, just to, you know, just space it out just a little bit slightly, just to make sure that the transmission is, uh, when the two halves are coming together, uh, you know, it just makes a nice solid contact through the shims. And just to give you a visual, like there are no, there, like there's no vis visual gaps where the shims are placed. So they're quite thin. So um, the thing is, this will, you know, create a nice contact surface where the screws are going to be compressing on the actual plastic casing. Um, you don't have to do it, but it's just one of those things that uh, I decided to go for. Um, but other than that, uh, the transmission, like, uh, you know, the top shaft here, just to give you a visual, it just has a tick of play. All right, and it spins quite freely. Now, there is a bit of friction that's going on. But obviously this is because it's a new transmission and I also used some grease. Now, what grease did I use? I used this stuff called Eureka Pro. Uh, it's a you know, lubricant for steel or plastic gears. I got this from TKL Racing. Uh, sorry, I'll just say it again. TKL Racing, which is based in the United States. And so I thought, well, might as well give this a try and see how it works. But um, yeah, overall, um, I'm hoping that the modifications that I did to the transmission will help uh, improve uh, the overall, um, you know, overall uh, durability, efficiency of the transmission. And, uh, but you know, just these little things here and there, uh, they're not a problem. They're actually quite an easy fix to do, which you can do at home and um, yeah, give it a try. and. Uh, let me know how it works. I haven't taken out one of these DM2s before, but uh, uh, from what I've seen so far, like quality-wise, it's a high-quality kit that just has a little air, a little bit of areas that need to be worked on to really improve it and make it a competitor. Okay, so that's all. That is the the BBC Racing Firebolt DM2 transmission modification build tips, whatever you want to call it. Okay, bye bye.